I'm very uh, thankful to you to be here in our meeting, but also on the EAC session. And I'm very grateful also to present uh, clinical cases about a high-risk acute coronary syndrome. So it was a case of a man, five, five, uh, uh, 53 years old, with a history of diabetes, but also atrial fibrillation and rapixaban 5 mg twice daily. He presented to emergency with new onset, dyspnea, and chest pain. The ECG have atrial fibrillation, but also negative T waves in anterior and inferior leads. He have high sensitivity troponin with elevated rate, but also an emergency rapid echocardiogram showed a reduced ejection fraction with uh, uh, epokinesia in anterior and inferior walls. He have also moderate renal failure, mild anemia, high rate glycemia, and also a nildel cholesterol at 1.1 gram per liter. So, so the diagnosis is so easy. And uh, due to this new recommendation, as said Professor Gillard, is a simplified combining diagnosis pathway from clinical presentation to final diagnosis. And here I insist that I must do the ECG at 10 minutes after the first medical contact. But what about our practice really in Tunisia? In our la la large registry, the Nature PCE one in 2020, about more than 2,000 patients, the delay between chest pain, first medical contact, and ECG are around 100 minutes and we must really, really be uh, aware of this long delay. After that, don't forget the high sensitivity troponin in patients with non ST elevation with the same algorithm 0102 hours. To, uh, this is for risk stratification, really, and time to angiography. So there is no change in the criteria. The same, very high risk, high risk patient, and no, the, what changed is the timing of invasive strategy. The class one invasive strategy in very high risk is immediate. In high risk, and this is the case of my patient, he have a non-STEMI diagnosis, we must do invasive strategy, but this invasive strategy isn't recommended a class one in the first 24 hours. There is a down ground in, the, uh, in this recommendation in class 2E, early invasive strategy isn't obligatory. Why? Because as said, there is a recent meta-analysis in 2022, there is no benefit between early and late invasive strategy in mortality. Thus, we, we declass this uh, recommendation to class 2E. And the question after that, if we don't explore patient at the first 24 hours, what about antithrombotic therapy? What about pretreatment? It is the same thing. P2Y12 inhibitors are not recommended a non-STEMI patient on routine. But, but, but if, be careful. Because such in some center in the UK, but also in Tunisia, if we have large delay between the diagnosis and the invasive strategy, we must think about P2Y12 inhibitors in pretreatment to, to low the ischemic risk. And as you say, in our registry, in Nature PCI registry, the main delay between the diagnosis and invasive strategy were three days. And we use also in 2020 clopidogrel 90%. And, uh, but I think in the new registry, the big four one, we have high intensity P2Y12 inhibitors. So my patient at high ischemic risk done the angiogram at 16 hours after admission in ICU, after loading dose clopidogrel, aspirin, and heparin. And as you see here, he has severe multivessel disease. And our strategy was to do immediate PCI for the RCA, left menelid and circumflex with three drug eluting stunt, new generation, serolumus and bulumus, with two stunt in the left main LED and circumflex with optimization as recommended and a good final result as you see here. So my question after that, in this patient in high or very high ischemic risk, what about antiplatelet therapy? So don't forget to evaluate as recommended the, 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 the bleeding risk. And this is the same recommendation. 
and make practice in our center, but also in the recommendation, we must evaluate the bleeding risk with the RCASH bear risk score. And my patient is under WAC, it is at high bleeding risk also. So what about antiplatelet therapy? No change in this new recommendation in 2023. Three therapy, seven day, almost seven day, the first one, then under six, 12 months, one antiplatelet therapy, and uh, we recommend the P2 Y12 inhibitor, clopidogrel, with the uh, anticoagulation. But, but there is a question, what about high intensity P2 Y12 inhibitors? Because I think in very high ischemic risk, why not associating ticagrelor or prasugrelor with, with anticoagulant? The question is, there is no recommendation because there is a few percentage in the previous study. But I think there is one and coming, and then perhaps we have new in, in future. So after that, don't, don't forget bleeding risk even in patients without oral anticoagulant with de-escalation which is newly introduced in this recommendation. Other thing, my patient have a left main stenosis and in this recommendation as recommended you saw, there is a place to antivascular imaging and it is a first time introduction with OCT or IVUS to guide PCI in the, to get PCI in the culprit lesion, but also in the ambiguous lesion. Unfortunately, in Tunisia, in our cat lab, we haven't this antivascular imaging. Hope we have it in future. Don't forget also to revascularize all patients with completeness revascularization. For non STEMI patient, we have, in my patient, a completeness revascularization with drug eluting stent. In class 2E, it's recommended because there is no, more, no, no dedicated study. But what is new in STEMI patient, don't forget complete revascularization. After complete trial, it must be due either in the index hospitalization or in 45 days. What about the reality in Tunisia in 2020? There is only 40 to 60% of complete revascularization in the nature PCI registry. But soon, in a few hours, we will really discover the new res result for the big four registry about revascularization. Don't forget also the prevention, the secondary prevention. As said by, by Professor Gillard, there is a high intensity lipid lowering strategy as soon as possible at admission in the ICU. And we need to make patients to high intensity statin. But also we can, we can discuss the first association between statin and azetimib. In the recommendation after four, six weeks, if, if we aren't at the target, we add azetimib. And then the long-term treatment, antiplatelet, statin, but also the heart failure drug, I think it will be discussed after me, and then uh, cardiac rehabilitation. Diabetes, don't forget it also. And my patient was discharged with a large prescription. And I hope in Tunisia we will develop polypill, polypill to increase adherence, and it is recommended in class 2E, but also to, to develop cardiac rehabilitation center. So, I invite you also to discover in a few days our guidelines, Tunisian guidelines, adopted for, from previous guidelines, but also adapted to our Tunisian context to acute coronary syndrome. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>